At the beginning of the movie, we see Kev and his girlfriend sneaking into an abandoned house. The girl is apprehensive about the possibility of someone discovering them, but Kev assures her that nothing will happen. While exploring, Kev comes across a crown, and he decides to place the crown on his girlfriend's head, and then praises her beauty. Salwa accidentally hits an item, causing it to fall and break, startling both of them, and to their horror, they watch a horrifying entity emerging from inside it, prompting them to quickly hide behind the bookshelf. Kev attempts to silence Salwa, and the entity moves to the other side, and when Kev goes behind it to check on her, he is shocked to see the entity looking at him. Terrified, Kev attempts to move back, and as the entity jumps on him, Salwa intervenes. Tragically, the entity kills her by inserting its hand into her mouth, and witnessing this horrific sight, Kev flees in terror. Now, after a few years, we see Fiona getting ready for college. When she opens the fridge, she hears someone calling her name. She initially ignores it, but the voice becomes more haunting, causing her some fear. She grabs a knife from the kitchen and cautiously moves in the direction of the voice, but finds no one there. Confused, she turns to go back, but a diary falls, startling her, and as she bends to pick it up, we see Salwa's ghost behind her. In the diary, Fiona discovers a photo of her grandmother Anna, and she again hears the voice telling her to come back, adding to the eerie atmosphere. Later, we see Fiona at college with her friend Luna, when accidentally her finger is cut by a surgical blade. She is shocked to discover that all the students in her class have disappeared leaving her alone in the classroom. She then gets startled upon seeing Salwa's ghost in front of her and asks who she is. Salwa requests her help, causing Fiona to become terrified. Salwa asks her to come home and then vanishes, and Fiona is shocked to find herself in front of her grandma's house. But the next moment, she returns to her class and Luna asks her what's wrong. Fiona tells her that a woman just called her name, asking for help and to come back and suddenly she found herself in front of her grandma's house. In response, Luna advises her not to frighten her, and suggests focusing on helping her with the report. Later, while discussing Fiona's visions, she shares with Luna that when she was little, she lived with her grandma. However, since moving to Jakarta, her mother has never mentioned her grandma or visited her at her house. Luna suggests that Fiona should visit her grandma on her own if she knows the address. Fiona agrees stating that's her plan, and asks if she should leave now. Luna inquires if she can't wait, to which Fiona responds that it's not that far. At that moment, Luna's boyfriend Jeff arrives, and she asks him if he will allow her to go with Fiona to her grandma's house. He agrees and decides to accompany them. He then leaves to retrieve his bag, and Fiona mentions that she will wait for them in the car. However, upon reaching the parking lot, she is startled to find Salwa's ghost in her car, and subsequently, Luna and Jeff scare her as well. Following this, they depart for her grandmother's house. However, to Fiona's horror, she hears the same agonizing voice pleading for help through her car's stereo. After some time, when Jeff asks her about their location, she responds that she doesn't know because her map is not working. Luna and Jeff also check their phones and confirm that Fiona is correct, they continue on the same route. However, after covering some distance, Salwa's ghost appears, causing Fiona to apply a sudden break. Luna asks her what's wrong, to which she says she saw the woman at the lab earlier. However, Luna and Jeff do not see anyone there, and Luna dismisses it as just Fiona's imagination. Now, since the radiator of their car is broken, Jeff states that they will have to walk the rest of the way. The three of them set out on foot to find Fiona's grandmother's house. However, Luna sees Kev's ghost on the way, which frightens her, though Jeff and Fiona do not see anyone there. They continue moving forward, but when Luna looks back, she sees Kev's ghost there. Finally, they reach Fiona's grandmother's house and notice a bell, but when Jeff attempts to ring the bell, it breaks and falls. Now when no one answers, they decide to walk in. Jeff notices a talisman on one of the windows and is about to touch it, but he feels something strange, prompting him to stop. Meanwhile, Luna notices movement inside the house, and after a while, Grandma opens the door and becomes delighted to see Fiona there. Fiona hugs her in excitement, and Grandma says she has been waiting for her for a long time. 
Grandma brings Fiona inside the house and informs her that she has something for her and asks her to wait there. Meanwhile, Luna notices a scary entity roaming outside the house. Just then, Fiona notices Luna and asks her what she is doing there, inviting her to come inside. As Luna enters the house, the door shuts on its own, startling all three of them. However, Fiona dismisses it, attributing it to the wind. After a while, Fiona's grandmother returns with a jar of cookies, mentioning that Fiona loved to eat them when she was little. Fiona takes out a cookie and starts eating it, evoking emotions from Jeff and Luna as they witness their strong bond and love. Grandma then offers cookies to them, and Fiona introduces Jeff and Luna to her grandmother. That night, Fiona asks her grandma why she doesn't turn on the lights and why she is using a kerosene lamp. Grandma explains that the house has been without power for a long time. Fiona then questions why her grandma didn't call her mom for help, to which grandma responds, saying it's okay, as she no longer requires the world's assistance. Grandma then asks Fiona and Luna to come with her to boil water for hot tea and instructs Jeff to stay there. On their way to the kitchen, Luna notices a rocking chair swinging on its own, but when she calls Fiona over to show it to her, the chair stops. Fiona explains that it's her grandma's chair, and she used to read books there until she fell asleep. Just then, Grandma reminds them not to forget that the water is boiling, and if they wish to drink, they can do it on their own. Meanwhile, Jeff hears someone calling for help. He rushes in and asks them if they are okay. Fiona assures him that they are fine. He then leaves but becomes terrified upon hearing the voice again. When he attempts to move back, we see the entity standing behind him and he bumps into it. Jeff is horrified by this encounter, but musters up the courage to turn around and check, but there is no one there. Following this, Jeff sees the entity in the reflection of a clock and hears someone asking for help again. And before he can understand anything, the entity attacks him. Meanwhile, Luna, on the other hand, gets terrified seeing possessed Jeff behind her, who grabs her by the throat and lifts her into the air. Hearing her screams, Fiona rushes to the scene, and when Grandma arrives, the entity releases Luna and collapses. Grandma then approaches Jeff, touches his forehead, and manages to bring him out of possession. Later, Luna tells Fiona that she thinks Jeff is possessed, but Fiona dismisses it, saying she thinks he had a seizure. Luna insists she knows Jeff and he doesn't have seizures, adding that he wouldn't choke someone during a seizure. She believes the house is the reason, with a strong, mystical vibe. Fiona asks her to stop, stating that she is educated and mysticism is simply an outdated way of explaining things they don't comprehend. Later, Grandma tells Fiona that she should spend the night there as it's late, and Jeff still hasn't recovered. Fiona agrees, and Grandma instructs her to sleep in her room. Fiona hesitantly asks why boards are covering every window and door, to which Grandma explains that this place is full of bad people. So she nails every door and window shut to keep them out and make people think the house is empty. Fiona then returns to her room and tells Luna that it used to be her mother's room. She's sure Annika and she used to sleep here, and she wishes she could be a child again sometimes. Luna asks if she has a photo of herself with her father, to which Fiona reveals that her father died when her mother gave birth to Annika. That's why her mom decided to move to Jakarta and forget the memories with her father and this house. Luna encourages Fiona, saying her mother is a strong woman and Fiona should be like her. However, Fiona confides in Luna, revealing something she has never told anyone. She explains that her grandma was treated in a mental hospital. Her grandpa passed away shortly after her grandma gave birth to her mother, and when Annika was born, her father died too. A year ago, her mother was being treated in a mental hospital because she wanted to kill her boss for no reason. Fiona admits she's scared, feeling like she's just biding her time to experience the same thing. Luna says she now understands why Fiona has never believed in mystical things and advises her to be patient. Now, after some time, when Jeff regains consciousness, he gets horrified to see the entity levitating above him and it attacks him once again. Meanwhile, Fiona's mom returns home and asks Annika where Fiona is, to which Annika responds that perhaps she hasn't returned yet. After Annika leaves, her mother finds grandma's photo, which makes her worried, so she tries to call Fiona. 
On the other hand, Luna asks Fiona to come with her to get a drink. But Fiona says she is sleepy, and when Luna gets up, we see Salwa's ghost sitting behind her. Scared, Luna goes out alone, where she gets horrified to see something, and we see the entity is on the floor right in front of her. The entity takes the support of Luna's body and stands in front of her, and when Luna tries to run away, she encounters Jeff and asks for his help. She then gets shocked to see a knife in Jeff's hand and asks him what's wrong with him, and as Jeff attacks her, she wakes up screaming. Fiona tries to calm her down, but they both get shocked when they hear a painful voice asking for help. They then get terrified seeing a girl sitting on the bed behind them, and suddenly the entity haunts them, prompting them to come out of the room. Outside, they encounter Grandma, who tells them not to leave the house, and then she collapses. They bring Grandma back to her room, where Fiona asks her what's wrong. When Grandma remains silent, they decide to leave, asking her to take a rest. However, Grandma tells them not to leave the house, as there are many bad people out there. They go to Jeff's room and find that he is not there. Fiona tells Luna that they need to find Jeff immediately, as she should get out of this house to get Grandma's medicine. Luna says she doesn't want to be there alone, to which Fiona says she needs her to look after Grandma. Just then, they hear that voice again, and Luna tries to stop Fiona, but Fiona insists they check, as maybe someone needs help. Despite Luna's best efforts to stop her, Fiona follows the voice and comes upstairs, and they notice that the crying sound is coming from behind a door. Fiona enters the room where she sees Salwa's ghost behind a plastic sheet, but when she looks on the other side, there is no one there. Meanwhile, both of them get scared, seeing a skeleton. And when Fiona tries to leave the room, a force pulls her back inside, and the door gets locked. However, after a while, the door opens and they run back downstairs. Luna says she told her that this house is haunted, and now they must get out of here. Now, when they try to get out, they encounter Salwa's ghost at the door, and outside, a local finds the gate opened, and the bell on the ground, and he runs away, saying this is a bad sign. Meanwhile, Fiona tries to calm down Luna, and Salwa's ghost begins moving towards them, crying for help. They both try to flee, and when Salwa's ghost follows them, they begin throwing things at her. Finally, Luna throws something that sets the ghost on fire, giving them a chance to run out of the house. On the other hand, the man reaches other locals and tells them that the bell at the old house is on the ground. He asks them to inform others while he goes to inform the shaman. Meanwhile, Fiona and Luna knock on one of the houses around here to ask for help, but nobody answers. Here, the man reaches the house with the shaman, who picks up the bell and gives the man something to sprinkle at every corner while he fixes the bell. However, as the shaman fixes the bell, the entity attacks him, after which it kills the man too. Meanwhile, Fiona and Luna reach the bridge by which they came, and Fiona says that this means they are near their car and can spend the night sleeping in the car. On the other hand, we come to know that there has been an accident at Jalan Sijulang, and three people were killed. After some time, Fiona and Luna also reach that location and are shocked to see that it's their dead bodies. They realize that all three of them had died in that accident, and Luna collapses, and when Fiona tries to calm her down, she notices that they are back outside her grandma's house. Now, in a flashback, we see that Fiona's grandfather was an antiquarian, and in his collection, there was an item whose breakage freed the entity and led to Salwa's death. After this, Grandma was possessed by that entity who was then killed by Kev, and then Kev was also killed by that entity. And for this reason, Fiona's mother had left that house and got it sealed along with that entity. The movie fast forwards, and we see that Fiona's mother is now mentally ill, continuously repeating Fiona's name. Annika tries to explain to her that Fiona is gone, and as she leaves the room, we see the entity in their house, and the movie ends. Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like, summon that subscribe button, and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, stay spooked.